and like you, I, I agree. Okay, wait. With, like, can, yeah, can, okay, here's okay. this is my question. This is my issue. Okay, here's what I think. Okay, the only way that peace happens, in my opinion, is if both sides agree to a two-state solution. Okay. Do we, do we agree with that, or do we think a one-state right of return thing is possible? I would say three. I think that Gaza okay, should be two or three, whatever. We'll say, but I'll just I'll abbreviate it to two state, right? That's the problem. Number one. Sure. Okay, but the issue with that is right now, Israel doesn't really want a two-state solution because one, they feel like they're going to get attacked from these territories anyway, and two, because the status quo is kind of sort of favoring them. They've got good military control over both things. They're slowly expanding settlements into the West Bank. Um, they've got Gaza, the Gaza Strip on total lockdown. Like for the most part, the status quo is more or less favoring Israel. So Israel doesn't have an appetite for su like super coming to the table for good faith to, to state solution docs, number one. Number two, on the Palestinian side, they don't want two states. They want one state. Um, because two states, they probably feel like they're not going to get a good deal. Their entire population has been radicalized like a motherfucker, and they seem to enjoy the fighting. They want to fight, 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 fight. So Israel doesn't have the appetite for it. They're not close enough to it um, because they're benefiting from the status quo. Palestinians don't have an appetite for it because all they know is basically fighting against Israel. It seems to be that's like 95% of what the Palestinian struggle is. And then in the broader sense of the world, the Arab states also seem to encourage this sort of fighting against Israel as well. So they don't have as much of an appetite for it, save for the states that are slowly starting to make peace agreements with Israel, but they're not the really big important ones yet, like Qatar or Iran or Lebanon. So that's so right now, it seems like there's no discussion, reasonable discussion that can take place until these three facts are reconciled. That Israel doesn't want it, Palestine doesn't want it, and the Arab states don't want it. Uh, and until somebody here is willing yeah, well, to I, move first, it's not going to be Israel. I wouldn't expect them to. Um, but that's my point. I think yeah. this, that first mover has to be America, that America has to be both behind the scenes and publicly. America. The only way America can be the first mover is if America is bringing like the they can't bring. I don't think America can exert any authority on Palestine. I don't think America, Palestinians give a fuck. No, right? but Amer what America could do is America could say that we will pay um, for the. We will give a, a shit ton of money, and it won't come through directly through us, but rather go directly through the UN, mm -hmm. and we can give a shit ton of money to try to rebuild Gaza. After I mean, we could do that, but I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure. Style. I'm pretty sure Palestine is is already. I should look this up. I'm pretty sure Palestine is one of the most um, uh, foreign funds rich like yeah, territory the in the world that that's, in terms of the money they receive true. from other people, right? So true, if the U.S. is going to exert influence on anybody, it probably has to be on like on like Iran, which is probably not going to happen. On Lebanon, probably not going to happen. I don't really know much about the Lebanese government or what the f*** they do, I'm going to be honest. And maybe uh, Qatar, yeah. but I don't know the U.S. relationships with Qatar as much as like Saudi Arabia. I don't know what that's like as well. So yeah, I, I feel yeah, like it's, the most reasonable path to peace that nobody wants to talk about and, and nobody will talk about, um, I feel like the most, and it sucks to say it, but I think the most reasonable path to peace is Palestinians need to say, we are done with the rockets, we're done with the fighting, we're going to chill, and we're going to focus on our education, our economy, our communities, and then in five years, if shit has come down substantially, I think the Palestinian argument for Israel coming to the table to negotiate a two-state solution becomes a lot more tenable. And I think international pressure will mount hardcore if, imagine if there were four, five, or six, as horrible as it is, imagine if there were three, four, five, six events where IDF soldiers were killing Palestinians or whatever, and there was no reprisal from Palestinians. And imagine you've got Gaza and the West Bank more or less peaceful. You've still got these settlers moving in you still got some idea of violence i think at that point international pressure gets so big that israel has to negotiate some kind of fair solution but uh, but yeah, i, I feel like the that. only reasonable starting party is basically the palestinians and absent that i don't see anybody else moving unless you see another path towards it I, yeah i agree with you i just don't think that that's going to happen under hamas leadership and so if it's not going to happen under a Hamas leadership, there needs to be a figure. You need to figure out a way to make it so that it's not under Hamas. Then leadership. it's not. Then it's not going to happen. Then the status quo continues until point. all the Palestinians are either killed, kicked out or whatever. Is, that's it. Yeah. Like your your levers of power um, to the degree that you have any, but to the degree that like, you know, America writ large uh, that, that you would be included in, like the lever of power that America has is over Israel a lot more intensely than it is over the PA or particularly over Hamas. And so, therefore, if we're talking about what the levers that Israel uh, can be can be made to pull through, yeah, but we're not going to do America anything to force. To what are we going to force Israel to do? That's what I'm saying. We can force them to occupy um, uh, Gaza, but then we can also make sure that we guarantee that a shit ton of money goes. Wait, why do we think? Why do we think the occupation of Wait, Gaza no, no. would be a good thing? You were, yeah, because you were you were saying that there was a bunch of money that goes to Gaza, and that's true. But it's also true that the the leadership of Hamas is worth eleven billion dollars in living in Qatar. It's true that there's a massive problem of of like siphoning off those funds into bullshit and into 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 military funding against uh, Israel. Right. So like, if we're talking about like how we can actually move forward 
from a, a perspective of how we benefit the people of Gaza, like there has to be that recognition that it's not going to happen I, until Hamas is no longer I just don't see I, the occupation of Gaza just seems like such a huge step back for the Palestinians, for Israel, and for the international community's view but of the attack. How, how do you think that's ever going to Yeah, because if we recognize that the people of um, uh, the West Bank under Area C are, are served better than the people living in Gaza under the dictatorship of Hamas, that that requires that we say, okay, it's better for the Palestinians. And we also are willing to say, okay, it's better. You're for not, the I understand what you're say, saying, but this is like, you're coming from like the most robotic utilitarian analysis in the world. Like, no, but Steven, what, Steven, no Steven, hold on. What you're saying is that like, I, listen, Palestinians, yeah. it's going to be better for you if we come back to your lands, if we reoccupy you, if we run this, again, we can do it better than you retards can. We'll do it. Yeah. You lost the right. Like, there, I understand what you're saying. I think what you're saying is true, by the way. I think that Israel occupying yeah. Gaza and running the security checkpoints, everything, I think it actually would be better for Palestinians, but it is totally politically untenable. There's no possible way they would go for it. I don't think but it would. But that's why America needs to support it. No, no. When I say they won't go for it, I mean, nobody in the international community would go for it. I don't think America would pressure them for it. America would look crazy. America pressures Israel to reoccupy Gaza after 18 years of disengagement. There's no way. It would I just be horrible. There, Sorry, there needs to be a recognition that it is like, is it difficult for America to support something like that? Yes. Is it significantly more difficult for anyone who is actually a country there or in leadership in the Middle East? To support it yes it is significantly harder for them to do it so if we're going to see a way of getting this broader problem to be solved in a way that it approximates two slash three solution state solution that's going to require someone to do this brave political step and this brave political step can't come from israel alone and it can't come from you can't expect it to come from hamas because it's not going to come from hamas because hamas would and die and get destroyed by the islamic state or whatever by some other terrorist group um if they try to do it themselves uh, anything you want to add? Sorry, I was just reading something. Uh, uh, I think the, I, but I guess it's also there's also maybe a problem with the idea that um, that because again I'm I'm guessing when you're saying that Palestinians can just like do nothing violent for the next five years and then that might advance things. I guess we probably. I guess you're saying that with the knowledge that it's like never going to happen, it's right? It's not going to happen. So you know, I'm um, saying I'm saying that if of all the possible paths to peace, and historically mm -hmm. when we look at paths to peace, uh, paths to peace, whether we're talking about. Um, civil rights struggles in the United States, whether we're talking about like even the ANC, I think in South Africa, although they did commit violent acts, I think they generally try to commit to nonviolence, right? Um, like w when you look at these other things historically, the, the smaller people fighting ultra violently against the bigger people, has this ever worked anywhere? Just, are there any historical yeah, like, examples where like, oh, shit, they to, kept doing the terror attacks and it finally worked and they got peace? Like, has that ever happened just, anywhere? Just to maybe qualify a little bit what you're saying is like, it's mm -hmm. not it's not so much like nonviolence, but I guess if you're going to do like an ANC style approach, it would have to just be take that, that violent impulse will always be there. It just needs to be channeled into something that can actually sure. be uh, productive. Yeah. So like whether it's um like I'm perfectly in favor of people just like if a settler wants to set up a new caravan, then they can just like blow it up. Preferably when the guy's not in the house, mm -hmm. um, like yeah. that kind of shit. Probably like uh, like the Mandela esque leader, but um, sure. I get, even with that, I think um, I've I've read an article about this from Foreign Affairs quite a while ago. But I do know that the United States does have the ability to pressure um, Abbas and the PA uh, in some directions. And I think one of the big problems with Abbas right now is that he's not very interested in a successor. But there are lots of leaders within Fatah who probably would have. A much more like modern or like a reasonable approach. It's just that um, Abbas is so authoritarian that he's not really got any incentive to try and allow leadership conferences or um, like any kind of competition to take place within the party. Yeah. So, but that the United States could pressure that. They could pressure Abbas to like start to explore potential avenues for new leadership, at least in the West Bank, outside of Hamas.